Hey everybody, I'm Chris Wook. If you're a PC enthusiast, you probably remember the venerable line of Sound Blaster sound cards from Creative. Now, if you're anything like me, you might have thought that the Sound Blaster line was a thing of the past. Turns out that isn't true, as evidenced by this. This is the Creative Sound Blaster Roar. It's a Bluetooth speaker that packs in a ton of features, some of which we've never seen before. Now, it looks pretty promising, but how does it hold up? Let's find out. Creative has packed a fair amount of stuff into the Sound Blaster Roars box. Opening it up, the first thing you'll see is the speaker itself. You'll also find the USB cable, an AC adapter, two additional power outlet adapters for the power brick, and finally, the manual. Depending on what part of it you're looking at, the Creative Sound Blaster Roar is either beautifully simple or intimidating in its complexity. While most of the speaker is covered by the silvery grille, one side of it is pretty much covered in buttons. I mentioned before that this speaker has a ton of functionality, and all those buttons are proof. The fact that the top of the speaker has even more buttons provides further proof. With a total of five drivers inside, this is a fairly heavy and solid feeling speaker. If you're going to try to carry it around with you, you'll probably want a bag or a case. There isn't one included, but there is one available. The bag Creative Cells is mesh and won't provide much protection, but it makes it handier to carry and you don't have to take the cover off the speaker when you're using it. Looking at standard functionality, pairing the Roar is quick and easy. If your device is NFC enabled and the Roar is powered on, a simple tap on the NFC icon is all it takes. Otherwise, hold down the multifunction button until a friendly voice informs you that you are now in pairing mode. Pairing mode. Waiting for device to connect. Now just pair from the device of your choosing. Bluetooth range is around 30 feet. I listened to a few songs at this distance and didn't notice skips or stutters in the music. Of course, if you can't or don't want to use Bluetooth, the 3.5mm audio in jack allows you to plug in anything you want. The Roar also supports playback from its built-in micro SD slot, easily controlled from its back panel buttons. Both MP3 and WMA files are supported. Plug the Roar into your PC or Mac, and it allows you to access the micro SD card. But hold down the play button, and something even cooler happens. The Roar becomes a USB sound card, and that's not all. With a quick download, the Sound Blaster control panel software allows you to tweak a bunch of different settings, including EQ. The Roar includes speakerphone functionality and has a pretty good sounding mic, but even cooler is the fact that it can be used to record calls. We haven't seen this in any other speakers so far, and we're still not done talking about features. You've also got voice recording, an alarm button that plays a loud noise when pressed, and loud sounds mode, which, well, plays loud sounds at random. Creative claims a battery life of around 8 hours for the Sound Blaster Roar, and I found that to be just about dead on. During my testing, I got just over 8 hours before I needed to plug in and charge. Looking at the button panel, you might notice there are two USB ports, one mini and one full-sized. The mini is for charging the Roar via USB and for plugging it into your computer, while the full-size jack allows you to use the Roar's 6000 mAh battery to charge other devices. We've seen this in other speakers before, but it's still nice to see. Testing the Roar was an even more involved process than normal since I tested it as a sound card, playing music via the micro SD slot, Bluetooth, and the 3.5mm audio jack with a ton of different music formats and a bunch of different genres, as well as audiobooks and podcasts. For a short playlist of a few of the many songs I listened to during testing, check out the video description. Bass is generally pretty good, though the surface that the speaker rests on can have a lot to do with how much the bass carries, so you might want to experiment a bit when first setting it up. Once you've got it right, there's a satisfying thump to the low end. The mid-range is clear and well-defined, and I didn't find much harshness in the high end. As you push the volume higher, things do get a little more harsh sounding, but the same can be said about pretty much any speaker in this range. In terms of volume, the roar gets fairly loud. There is a tiny amount of stereo image to be had here, but barely, as expected. The roar button both boosts the volume and slightly tweak certain frequencies to make the speaker easier to make out in loud situations. In creative's words, this makes for even more powerful, kick-ass, no-holds-barred audio. 
The Sound Blaster Roar sounds good enough that even without all the other features, it would still easily be worth the retail price of $199, but it's got so much more. This really is the Swiss Army knife of portable speakers, and that makes it a great choice for anybody who's looking for a good sounding speaker that's also super versatile. We're giving the Creative Sound Blaster Roar a 9 out of 10. And that's it for this one, folks. If you want some more details, check out the written review over at soundguys.com. You can find a link to that, as well as a link to our forums in case you have any questions down in the description. And why not subscribe to Sound Guys? We've got a ton of awesome stuff coming. I'm Chris Wook. Thanks for watching.